How's it going guys? Andrew here with Justified EDC and I have a very exciting video here for you today. Uh, this is a prototype um, of a new knife that's going to be coming out shortly um, and it is the Scythe. It is designed by uh, Tier 1 Gear Reviews and Old Squirrel Knives if you're familiar from, uh, with them from YouTube and Instagram um, and it's being produced by Shield and Knives. Um, and it is, if you, if you have eyeballs, you're seeing already, uh, it is a folding Pical uh, reverse edge style knife. Um, there are not a lot of those out there. And uh, the coolest part about it is it's a budget version. So before I get into all of that here, uh, they did send this along to me uh, to review. This is not mine to keep. This is a prototype. This is not the final version. Uh, this is a prototype that's being passed around to several different people uh, to get feedback on and stuff like that. So uh, just a disclaimer, not mine to keep or anything like that. It'll be being passed on to someone else after I'm done with it. Um, and then they sent this letter along with it that I'm just going to read on camera just for transparency's sake and all that good stuff. And just to give you guys some insight. So I'll put it here. So if you want to pause and read it for yourself, you can do that. I'll put a timestamp so you can skip over me reading if you don't care. Uh, but basically, here we go. Uh, first off, thank you for temporarily adopting our newest child. You're very welcome. Thank you for sending it along. Uh, we've worked very hard over the last two years to make this a reality. As you may know already, this is basically a folding version of a somewhat popular design we released in 2021 slash 2022 of the same name, the Scythe, uh, which I had kind of seen here and there. Um, the, the fixed blade design wasn't exactly my, my thing, but it was cool to see another uh, reverse head style, that kind of thing. So I was aware of it, uh, but I never handled one, um, which was impressively made start to finish by Chris from World Squirrel Knives and the custom sheaths by Guster Leather. Very cool. Uh, since they sh sold out uh, before we could really even do an actual pre-order, we figured it would only make sense for us to follow up with a folder version. Um, during our search for OEMs, we ultimately chose Shield and Knives based on the quality of another prototype they had made. The rest is history. Uh, just uh, for me butting in here, Shield and Knives uh, is a a uh, company based out of China. Um, they, I feel, I, from my experience, they mostly do OEM stuff. They have some of their own designs. Um, th their their in-house designs never really spoke to me uh, personally, uh, but they were very good quality from the ones that I had handled. I don't think I've ever shown any on the channel. I think that was pre pre YouTube for me, but Shield and Knives quality OEM from what I've experienced. Um, ultimately, our main goal with this project was to introduce a budget Picalda market, something that doesn't really exist, sadly, without slacking on the quality of materials and the process. A plus in my book. Uh, which Shielden did a great job with, considering it was something they've never really done before. Yeah, absolutely. This is much different than uh, the other things that Shielden has done. Um, hopefully, once these make their debut, it will allow... Debut, it will allow more people to experience just how cool and useful the Pical style really is. Of course, it's not meant to be a workhorse by any means or replace your favorite banger. Ultimately, it's just something meant to be small, lightweight, fast, and super concealable that will get you out of a pinch. Make no mistake, though, it is a dangerous little bastard, and I definitely wouldn't want to be on the business end of it. Uh, this is kind of my thoughts exactly in this, and I'm glad that they put it that way. Um, because, yeah, and I'll get kind of in my thoughts on the, uh, the, the theory of a of a folding uh, reverse edge knife like this. But yeah, it's very cool that a budget version of a Pical is getting brought to market, let alone a folding one. Um, there aren't really any even budget fixed blades out there other than really like the Copus Designs uh, Elvia. Um, and that's about a hundred bucks. And, um, but other than that, you're really looking at close to the $200 or up. Um, so it's very cool that this is being brought to market as a budget option. Um, and then just down here again, again, thanks again, tier one and all squirrel knives. Uh, that right there, you can see the price point on this is going to be 60 to 70 bucks, guys. So this is going to be super affordable. Um, and then your spec list here, 154 CM blade of the stone wash, black micarta handle that is polished. I wouldn't really call it a polish, but just a, 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 a lower grit finish on it. Um, nested stainless steel liners and cage ceramic bearings. So uh, there you can see, if you can see inside of there, let me grab my flashlight. So you can see down inside there, there you can see. Let me get the light in there. There you go. There's those steel liners that are nicely skeletonized. Um, another, spe another spec, I'll give you some size comparisons here uh, and stuff like that just because 
it's not listed, so weight it is a very lightweight knife. We're coming in at just over two ounces. And then in terms of the blade length, if you're following that ounce and inch rule that a lot of people like to follow, you're looking at, let's see if I can put it down here so it's easier for me to read on camera. It's right about two and a half inches. If you measure from the plunge grind uh, to the tip, you're looking at right about two and a half inches, maybe just a hair under. If you're measuring from the actual end of the handle, you're looking at just over two and a half inches. So this is a small knife. Uh, then your handle length here, I line this up, it's hard to see because the clip goes over it a little bit. You're looking at right about three and a half inches of handle. Uh, your grip area is slightly long, uh, shorter than that because of the flipper tab, which we will talk about. Um, and then the last disclaimer that they have on here is uh, the final version will have a different clip. This just has a fold over um, spring steel deep carry clip, which it is nice that the screws are uh, both countersunk and the clip is um, has a pocket to sit in, so everything is flush and nothing for your pocket to carry. Um, but this will have a reversible, so left or right hand uh, deep carry wire clip. And in talking with tier one, the clip will also be a little bit shorter. Uh, because one of the main things that uh, I'll talk about here in terms of the design of the knife is the clip has, gives you a lot of hot spots, but the clip will be changed. So um, in terms of changes to the final version that I'm aware of at this moment, uh, the only change really will be that the clip will be reversible. It will be a wire pocket clip and it will be slightly shorter. So now that that is out of the way, I can give you kind of my thoughts on this. Um, oh, also, this is the box that it came in again. Temporary packaging, but if anyone really cares. Um, uh, and actually, before I do that, before I hop into this, I want to take some time to thank the sponsor of the channel, Auxiliary Manufacturing. Um, Mike Jarvis over at Auxiliary Manufacturing, really cool guy, makes awesome custom fixed blades like this Sumi here. I have a couple more actually on the way to me very soon uh, to be uh, tested and reviewed. So um, big thanks to Auxiliary Manufacturing. He's really been helping the channel out, getting me some gear that helps me make the videos better. So thank you, thank you to him. I have links to his pages down in the description. Definitely go check him out. So now that that's out of the way, let's get into kind of my thoughts on the scythe, the design, the changes that are going to be made, and the kind of the, the mentality behind why you would want this kind of knife. So um, for those of you that may not be familiar with the Pical style of knife, um, I don't, one, welcome. It's a cool world to be in. Reverse edge is the way. Defend reverse edge. Um, but uh, if you're not familiar with it, all that means is that normally on a typical blade, when you hold it in your standard hammer grip like that, uh, how the blade opens, your edge would usually be on this side, but is actually on the back or the spine of the blade as it usually would be. And it's most often used in either your forward grip, uh, forward uh, grip uh, edge in like this with the blade facing towards you or reverse grip edge in with the blade facing you. Um, and this is made popular by a couple styles of martial arts, most notably, uh, well, there is some um, like Kali, there are some Kali styles that kind of have a couple reverse grip methods in it, uh, but it was definitely made more popular by the Piper and the Libre systems, um, and then definitely popularized by the, the rise of uh, Ed Calderon's design, the Elvia, if you guys are familiar with that, which I'll be doing some comparison to. Um, but it is basically in terms of, the, this is a fighting knife. Uh, the, the reverse edge is all about, is, is a fighting knife style. Um, that focuses on uh, stabbing and then ripping back towards you. Um, a lot of uh, traditional uh, knife styles in terms of martial arts are all about the edge out where you're kind of slashing away from you. Um, and with reverse grip, you're still slashing out like that. Um, but Pakal grip or reverse grip or reverse edge focuses on that kind of stab and rip. Same thing with the forward grip, you kind of stab and then rip backwards towards you. And the methodology behind that is that the muscles in your arms, your shoulder, and your back are much stronger pulling towards you than they are pushing away from you. So in terms of the strength and power behind your cut, something like this is not going to be as powerful as something that like this where you're pulling towards you. Um, so that's kind of the methodology behind that. Uh, if you weren't familiar, most of you probably are, but just wanted to give that uh, give that a summary just in case. Again, I'm not an expert. Go check out, uh, definitely check, go check out like Scott Babb uh, from Libre Fighting or uh, Ed's Manifesto, Ed Calderon. 
those are those guys are much more um, knowledgeable on the subject than I am. So, uh, but that's just kind of an overview. So, a lot of the blades that uh, I would consider good for this kind of style are fixed blades, um, and that just being in terms of. Uh, and just in terms of any kind of self-defense, I always prefer a fixed blade. Your fixed blades can't fold on you. They can't really break on you unless you actually break the steel or something like that, uh, which is much less likely to happen. Um, but there is an advantage to the folders, which is, is much smaller, much more concealable. Again, the size of a knife like this, I can easily palm it in my hand and have it be completely concealed like that. Um, and then with the flipper, you can easily deploy it like that like that, bring it into your either of your reverse grips like that. Um, so getting into the design of it, I love that it is a neutral handle. You guys know on this channel, I'm a big fan of neutral handles because it allows you to hold the knife in pretty much any grip that you grab it in. Now, this is a more specialized blade uh, where you're going to be wanting to use it pretty much in your reverse grips, but it is nice that no matter what grip you grab the knife in, the handle kind of melts into your hand. Um, the only real problem with it is the hot spot that the clip gives you. The clip sticks out pretty far, and because it's so long, you start to feel this in your hand when you grip it. Um, I would also probably flip the clip to the other side, just what I would prefer, but again, the, not a problem for the final version. This is a temporary clip. Um, the only other thing in terms of design then that I nitpicked when I was talking to tier one was, um, one, when you talk about, uh, using a folder for self-defense or anything like that, one, probably just use a fixed blade. You'd probably be better off, easier to deploy, just grab and pull, um, out of the sheath. But if I'm going to use a folder in a specific application, I would usually want it to have some kind of uh, pocket deploying device like an Emerson Wave or like this on the uh, Emerson Elvia that doesn't have a wave. This is the Gypsy Fix from Gypsy EDC uh, that just basically turns it into a wave. And all that allows you to do is pull this directly out of your pocket and wave it into your fighting grip. Um, whereas something like this, uh, you have to pull it out, find the flipper, deploy it, and rearrange your grip. So the I kind of see this more as... Um, it, again, if we were going to use this in a kind of a serious setting, kind of having this in your hands already as you're walking, either in your jacket pocket, in your pocket, just walking with this in your hand, it's very concealable. And then this way your knife is already in your hand. So you skip that step of having to reach in your pocket, pull it out, find the flipper, deploy it, rearrange your grip. You're, you're avoiding that and all you have to do is hit that flipper and now you have it in your forward grip edge in. Same thing if you wanted to do it in reverse, you have it concealed in the palm of your hand like this and all you have to do is really with, the, uh, with your pinky finger, hit that flipper and you can deploy it like that. Um, again, not as, con not as uh, convenient as a fixed blade, uh, but definitely more concealable. Uh, that being said as well, one of the reasons that I brought this out here uh, this is the Emerson Elvia designed by Andy Calderon, kind of uh, the first um, folding Pakal knife that I'm aware of other than like the, uh, I forget, he had a custom, uh, Ed had a custom knife maker make one of these that's in the thousands of dollars range, but really the only, the first available folding reverse edge knife was this. Um, the reason I brought this out to compare it is that uh, Emerson is kind of a divisive company in terms of the modern knife world of what people look for in a knife. Now, personally, I love Emerson knives. They're built tough. They're built hard to be hard used. Um, they're not flashy. They're not fidgety. Well, they can be in my opinion, obviously. Um, but like they have really rough scales. Uh, their action is just on uh, like Teflon washers. Um, it's not very uh, fidgety or drop shutty or anything like that. Um, it's just, just a workhorse that I, I do carry this knife for self-defense occasionally if I don't want to carry a fixed blade. Um, I trust this knife because I have trusted Emerson's uh, for a long time. I beat the hell out of them and I know they hold up. Something like this, and, uh, and uh, the reason that I'm really happy about this and how they did it, is that this has a lot of things that appeal to people in the modern knife market. Um, and this is something that I'm kind of learning as I as I go into uh, like traditional knives and stuff like that is I'm not the biggest fan of having uh, Americans design stuff and then have Chinese OEMs make it, especially for the higher end. I just think there's better ways to go about getting your design out there. 
but for the budget realm, especially when introducing new designs that aren't really popular or aren't really readily available to the general public in a price point that people can afford, this has a lot of the things that people want in a modern knife, but still has that, um, that Pical reverse edge style. So what I mean by that is you have, instead of just Teflon washers in here, you have cage ceramic bearings. So your action is super solid. The D10 is super solid. You get a super snappy action. It drops shut there. And as you can see here, uh, there is no like deployment method technically for this reverse flick, but kind of where the blade drops down in here, you can put your middle finger in here and flick that open with a little bit of practice. So you have a little bit of that fidget factor that I like to make fun of a lot of times. Um, but in terms of the materials then, like you got 154 CM, which the Emerson has as well, but the Emerson is closer to $300, whereas this is going to be coming in at that 60, 70 price point, which 154 CM is a solid, super solid steel at that price point. So you have a solid steel, you have micarta handles, you're going to have a deep carry wire pocket clip with a lot, which a lot of people love. You're going to have those cage ceramic bearings, which most people prefer a flipper, which a lot of people prefer. Again, this is, this is not how I would design a Pakal knife. Not I, not at all. Um, but I think, again, and they can correct me, either Tier 1 or Old Squirrel can correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like this was designed to kind of bridge that gap between the modern um, knives are a toy market and the serious use, hard use, serious self-defense kind of world. Um, it's kind of bridging that gap. So, And I don't even really have any knives that really uh, I guess this is probably the closest in terms of like a modern <laughs> uh, knife that I have, but it kind of bridges that world between the uh, everyone's obsessed with actions and steels and fidget factor and all that good stuff to the people that really just want a tool. And I think this is the perfect middle ground to kind of bring people into that world. And so that's awesome, that's huge. And again, if they had done this with a US OEM, no one's gonna be doing work this good for this cheap in the US. So politics aside, you can think of that whatever you want, but doing this with a Chinese OEM like Shielden that does quality work is a really good way to be able to get these into a lot of people's hands. I've said for years, if if uh, Ed um, had, had been able to lease this Elvia design to uh, even like an American company that does some more budget stuff like Kershaw or CRKT, um, and they made a budget version of the Elvia, they would fly off the shelves. Because not only are the people that are already in that world wanting a budget option that either like they just don't want to have a lot of money to spend, but they want something like this, or people that are outside of that world looking in, what, maybe being curious about this kind of design, but not wanting to go and spend two, three, four, five plus hundred dollars on a knife just to try out a new design. This is where that kind of Chinese OEM uh, is a really awesome thing to be able to let people try these new designs. And if they like it, they can say, okay, yeah, I, I kind of get the merit behind this. Now I can go to something like this, which I would consider a more serious tool uh, a little, that can be used a little bit harder or a fixed blade or something like that. Now that they've experienced the kind of merits that a reverse edge design does for you. Um, and make, me no, make no mistake, this, this can do some EDC type stuff. Like I said, I carried this um, I've only had this for the last like day and a half, but I carry this today at work. I open boxes with it. I open, uh, some like, uh, taped envelopes with it and stuff. So it can do your kind of basic EDC tests. You have a really fine needle point on there. Um, the edge came, this is like decently sharp, but again, I'm not the first person to have this. So I have no idea how many people have used this already. And it's not really my knife to be able to sharpen up and really see how the steel performs, but it came with a decent edge. And again, lots of people had it before. So my guess is it will come even sharper than that from factory. Um, but you get a really solid lockup. There is zero play on this at all. There's, there's absolutely no play. You have a fantastic action. Um, the only other thing here that I really brought up to tier one was the flipper tab. Again, a flipper tab is not my ideal deployment method. I much rather have a thumb opening like that where I can kind of slowly roll it open if I needed to, uh, and have it concealed or to just be able to deploy it from my pocket very quickly. 
Um, but if you're gonna do flipper, um, the only thing I brought up was with how short this handle is, the way I kind of grip it here to be able to thumb cap it here, uh, and the reason you'd want to thumb cap for those who aren't familiar with anything like this, um, you thumb cap it so when you're stabbing into something, uh, when the knife hits, your te your your uh, hand has a tendency to slide down onto the knife and you can cut your hand on that blade. So you put the thumb cap there to serve some extra stability. When I grip this in such a way that I can thumb cap it the way that I like to, that flipper tab digs into my hand a little bit. Now, you can avoid that by gripping the knife a little bit higher like that and your your uh, the meat of your the bottom of your palm of your hand kind of sits very nicely there in that curve and you don't feel it at all but then you're kind of just like capping this like straight across you're not making a whole lot of contact you're a little farther away from the blade that kind of thing um so this definitely still works it just doesn't feel as secure to me so i would prefer holding it down here and again it's not really a big deal as i was just kind of playing with this and doing some just kind of basic drills with this in terms of uh libre stuff um i didn't really notice this all that much it's just when i really sit down and think about it i feel that poking into my hand um now one thing that uh tier one gave me permission to talk about here and this uh this has not been talked about or released anywhere yet, so if you guys are watching this video uh, relatively uh, soon to uh, when I drop it, you're the first ones to hear about this. They are going to be in addition to this budget version with the Micarta and the 154CM. Uh, they are going to, they are planning as long as these go well uh, to produce a titanium frame lock version that will be a, a little bit bigger. I think he said about an inch longer in the handle, uh, give or take. So that will give you that extra room to be able to s s kind of grab this up higher and then still be able to thumb cap that handle that with that extra length. Um, I'm not sure if the blade length will be bigger at all. Uh, he is sending me some CAD files in terms of pictures and uh, um, drawings of it so that I can, I will post those on my Instagram and put them in a highlight so you guys can see them and I'll put a link down in these in the description. Um, but yeah, so there is another version of this coming that will be a little bit bigger that will kind of solve those problems that I have with the flipper tab. Um, but again, the point of this, it is very ultra light. It's very concealable. And I think those are kind of the merits that this, this small design has in terms of serious use as a self-defense kind of tool. Um, but again, I really think that this does an excellent, excellent job of bridging that gap between the modern fidget pretty art kind of knives and knives that maybe aren't as polished and uh, uh, fidgety and artistic but they are very good tools i think this is a great middle ground between that so i'm very happy to see them bringing this to market especially at a budget price point that is super cool so i know i said i was going to do some size comparisons here and i totally went on a rant because i'm very excited about this knife um, i'm going to pull out some uh, different knives here uh, that you guys will be familiar with so you can get a, a good comparison. So here's the Emerson Elvia, which again is not a lar super large knife, but you have about a, just under a three inch blade and then your handle length is like, like four and a half inches. Um, so this handle will actually be more akin to what the larger version of this with the titanium will look like. Um, so there it is next to the LV, the uh, Emerson Elvia. You can see it is much, uh, much smaller. Um, let me see if I can get some other knives out here. The only other really reverse, like dedicated reverse edge knife that I have right now is this auxiliary manufacturing Sumi. Uh, so as you can see, the handle is about the same size, but shorter blade on the Sumi. Um, but again, a fixed blade, so you don't run into that flipper tab uh, problem. Um, let's see, some other knives that I often show on the channel. Let's see, uh, just some old standards, just so you can get an idea. This is going to be hilarious next to each other. Here's the Buck 110 next to it. And here is, this is a Gonzo, but the exact same size as a Spyderco Delica. Because I know a lot of people have the Delica and are familiar with the size of that. Um, another one here is the Spyderco Para 3. So again, these are both not very big knives and they are still much, uh, at least in appearance, much bigger than the scythe. And then let's see, what else can we get in here? Here is the Sosby Blades Chicago Cub. And let's see, just for the hell of it, let me grab, here is the BW Knives Arabeth Short, which I actually don't know if I've shown on video yet, but really cool knife video coming soon on this 
Um, but there you can kind of see similar size knives, um, but these are fixed blades, obviously. So but there's just some size comparisons for you that you might be familiar with. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that's a good comparison. Uh, here's the, here's another Spyderco. I know a lot of people have Spyderco. So here's the Spyderco Gale Bradley 3 next to it. So again, this is a very small knife, so don't be uh, don't be don't be surprised when you get this, and it's very it's it's a tiny little guy, but it's very cool. Um, the last thing then that I will say about this, um, and this is this is definitely a nitpick, and again, uh, I can't really test this uh, to be able to tell you for sure. I will do a test on it once I get my own version of this, but in terms of the tip here, I did a very thin tip which is going to be great for piercing. This is going to pierce like no one's business, but I wonder how that tip will hold up in terms of hitting uh, something hard inside of an organic medium. So we're going to put it in plain terms. If I stab this into someone and I hit a rib or another bone, will that tip break off? I don't know. Uh, I, I don't want to do an organic medium test with this uh, because it's not my knife and it's a prototype. So once I get my own version of this, I will do a little bit more like hard use with it. Um, just to kind of see out of curiosity how it performs. And then the other thing about the tip here is you guys know I'm a stickler for on any knife that I'm going to be using in a self-defense role, especially dedicated reverse edge knives. I like the tip to be above or in line with the center or above. That So that when I say that, I mean um, the when I line this handle up here on the center line, I want this uh, this tip to be above that center line or in line with it. And the reason for that being when I stab it, if I stab into something, if your tip is kind of canted down here, like you see a lot, a lot of people really get that reverse, that, that uh, pecal blade shape wrong. And they have the blade way canted down here like this, like some kind of hook, uh, almost like a pruning knife like this. Um, See here, if I was to stab straight with this, you're just going to hit with the flat, and it's going to kind of jerk this. It's going to kind of cantilever this out of your hand. Um, but with a reverse edge knife, you want that tip to be pointing forward. So you hit with that tip, it penetrates, and then you have all of that power of that blade that's curved but still angled straight to rip outwards and open that wound channel up. Sorry if that's kind of nasty for you. Yeah, you guys listening that aren't kind of used to this kind of thing, but that's how it is. Um, so with the LV uh, here, you can kind of see how when I hold this straight with the this back exactly like this, when if, if I was stabbing into something, see how this blade curves up and then it points directly forward at your target. It points forward, so you're going to hit with that tip. It's going to penetrate, and then you can rip backwards. On this one, it is above the center line. As you can see, if I line this up here, that tip is above your center line, which is good. Um, but when you when I hold it flat here like this, you see how it kind of curves up, and it goes out, and then it starts to go straight, and then it starts to curve down a little bit again. It's ever so slight, um, but I'm interested to see how that will work on a penetration test, if that will affect it at all. Again, I haven't done the test, so I'm not going to say in one way or the other what it will do. Um, but it, it, that's a thing that I will want to, I, I, I would like them to consider maybe. Um, now again, with this handle shape, if you're, if we're set on this handle design, if it came up too much farther, you, it would be hard to seat that tip in the handle and not have that blade exposed above the handle line. So I get why they did it, but it's just something to consider. Um, again, when I can get one of my own versions of these, I'm probably going to buy at least two of these and just beat the hell out of one, then have one that'll keep it nice. Um, but I'll test that, see how it does. We'll see how that tip holds up, all that good stuff. But that's just something to be aware of. I've definitely seen way worse reverse edge knives where the tip orientation is like all the way down here. And I'm like, how are you going to stab with that? How does that work? That doesn't work. Um, so I'm glad to see that they at least thought of that. So this video is getting long here, guys, and I don't want to, um, I, I don't want to, uh, drag this out so much that people aren't going to watch it. Cause I really want people to get excited about this and go support tier one and old squirrel when this does drop, definitely go pick one of these up. If nothing, if no other reason other than to support them, I think it's a really, really cool knife that you guys are going to enjoy, whether you're from that more modern, uh, art knives world or that more old school, knife is a tool world. I think everyone can enjoy this knife and that's why it's great. So 
Again, I'm gonna link to the uh, the prototype pictures of the larger titanium version of this. Um, and so if you wanna follow that link to my Instagram to see those pictures, uh, that's a kind of a first exclusive look at those. Um, and if you have any other questions beyond what I answered on this, be sure I'll link Old Squirrel and Tier 1, uh, their Instagram pages, so you can go ask them questions personally, because again, I'm not the designer. They're a better person to ask than I am, but thank you guys again so much for watching. Uh, definitely go check these out when they drop, and as always, I will see you guys in the next video.